quickly share my PowerPoint here again so that I can show you the intro clip uh, from our friend uh, Phil. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, yes, I mean, there's two aspects to process, isn't there? There's one is the, the business process, and I'll come back uh -huh. to that. But in terms of the technology team and the IT teams across the business, mm -hmm. we certainly, we've integrated all the brands together. First thing we did was recognize that customers, you know, they come in through the brand, but we don't necessarily have to be siloed to the brand. So we've basically created a one business that's multi-channel, multi-brand. Okay. And we worked really hard at, at at flipping the model to become a scale, entirely scale agile model. So mm -hmm. we work as a product company now. So, you know, there's 16 product families in IT. Uh, they, they work with long standing teams. We don't run projects anymore. We, we allocate investment into a product area on a half yearly basis. And then we really delegate the authority to the heads of engineering in my team and the heads of the sponsors from the business to decide how do you allocate that resource and that funding to is it feature mm -hmm. building on a product or a backlog or dealing with technical debt so so i think i think we're unusual now because i think we our, our entire business works like that so i have okay. i have two ctos and they just have product families um, and, and we've moved completely away from what i would call a traditional project-based approach and that's mm -hmm. really worked for us it's really engaged the business in a different way it's okay. it's it's really increased our speed of execution and probably the most important thing is it, it's increased our return on investment. We've seen benefits escalate considerably, you know, over the last, you know, 12, 24 months, really. We've seen a real step on in terms of the return on investment from technology spend. But we so, had to do some really bold things, Andrew. I'll finish off. It just one of the things I inherited was that we had a project-based investment model still, but a yep. product-based operating model. And mm -hmm. we had to basically change the investment. So I had to get my business and the CFO and the, my boss to to really change and, and have a different level of thinking on IT investment. So like I said, we mm -hmm. moved away from project by project justification to product areas being funded on a half yearly basis and pushing a lot more empowerment out to, to the heads of engineering who work in, in, my, in my team. And it's really worked for us. Okay. So I think that's a, a great introduction to, um, to the next topic which I, I, I think is fascinating, uh, how I think uh, things have changed over the last, let's say, uh, 10 years. I mean, we all remember that we had to run IT as a business and where you would um, come up with a project and then you would get a price and a duration and then you would wait uh, three, six, 12 months to uh, have something that was probably over budget and over time and, and so on. So, so we come from a project uh, approach and we've gone in many organizations to a, pr a product approach. And let me at the same time uh, launch the, uh, the poll on this topic. So I wanna know in your organizations, your IT people, your engineers, your developers, um, do they work on product-based approach or on, still on project-based? So what percentage are product-based? That is what we wanna know, because this is, I think, the, the big shift that we uh, many organizations are going through. And uh, Phil said that he has his complete Sainsbury's complete IT uh, organization is organized like that. And he said that it's unusual in that way. So that's what I want to know from the panel here. Are you also already 100% in, in this way of working or is, still, is that your strategy you, you want to get there? Where are we on, uh, uh, on, on that part? Maybe Rudy, if you could kick it off. Okay, thank you. I was muted. That works better if you unmute. I, <laughs> this is my digital skill, you know. <laughs> um, in, in KBC, uh, at least in Belgium, we are uh, we have implemented scaled agile, uh, so completely full with uh, the whole IT create and, and uh, ops organization. So uh, for those who don't know, scaled agile is actually, it's it's talking about Scrum of Scrums. It's about uh, value streams. It's about some dedicated trains where people are dedicated uh, for example uh, around 100 people business and it people sitting together in a development train and they are uh, having a backlog so we are not working with projects anymore but with epics and with features uh, we are measuring value and focusing on value instead of on cost uh, we have program increments of every three months so every three months we make the new backlog and prioritize the backlog we have sprints of two weeks 
Every two weeks we do system demos. So we are really following the, the, the scaled agile approach. And what is the biggest benefit is that we have lesser idle time. We have uh, lesser interactions with other teams so more independent teams who can work end to end because it's biz DevOps. And also uh, the mutual understanding grows a lot uh, because now the, the business people see what is the complexity on the IT side, but also the IT people see that it's not so easy to make business decisions because the market is always changing. So I think the, the, the net promoter score towards each other increased like hell. The, the development, the speed of delivering, we now deliver from six to three months time, which was in the past the, the pre-study <laughs> in your example, Hendrik. So we really speed up the delivery and we make it also more efficient and cheaper. So I, I'm a big fan and I will continue with that. So we rolled it out all the organization and now we have to go further in it and, and lean portfolio management and so on. Okay. And uh, with uh, just sharing the result of the poll that we did, uh, one third have less than 20% people in uh, no or, or not, not many in product based, one third 20 to 50%, and then 22%, 50 to 80, and 12% say that are almost completely or almost completely in this product approach and this uh, uh, skilled agile uh, approach. At Telefonica, Angel, how far are you with, with adopting uh, this, this new way of working? I mean, um, regarding the, the way of doing projects, uh, yes, uh, we, are, we are, of course, we are, we are executing in a giant way. That's, uh, that's a, a must. And any, any new, new project or product that we are delivering, we, we are doing agile. We have the, the figures of product owners, Scrum Master, the trips, everything, so on. So that is a really change of culture. We are working on sprints and, and so on. But uh, it doesn't say that our company is totally product oriented. I cannot say that uh, honestly in this moment. So we are in we are in the way of, of, of changing, but not not today. And we of course we deliver product and services, and and and, and also we have a lot of work in integration projects. No? In order to we deliver a product, and then we have to do the integration. Integration is mostly based in pro, in project based projects. That doesn't mean that it's a waterfall of methodologies. We are we are doing agile methodology, but uh, mean we have still the roles that are in, in, the, in each of the partners. So as I said before, we are in the in the in the way of changing, and I, I hope that um, we are still in the way. Some organizations, for example, human resources or, or some areas of IT, has changed it already. But the not the the culture is still in the in our companies in in the way. So we have a, a lot of digital experience and transformation, and also with the with this crisis, we have experience that the, the digital interaction with ourselves. But um, but I mean, I, I couldn't say that uh, we are we are working on that. And regarding the way of doing uh, processes and projects, again, depending of the technology you are using. So if we are using market market uh, tools. Then we are using a, a technology with with um, a wine uh, out of the box uh, methodology with with why not approach you know, in order so why can you cannot use this uh, thing as platform as the the vendor is, is proposing and then do this kind of challenging and when doing the gaps and doing the sprints uh, whatever with the product backlog if you are doing data driven projects of course you are following different things and. And also, we are working also in BPM tools in order to, in, in order you are not able to change everything. So you have to reduce your legacy systems, and then you have to connect your legacy with your customer engagement. So we are using BPM tools as well, but mostly in a project based approach in this moment. Okay, thank you, Angel. Massimo, Margaret, you want to chip in on this? Yes. I think that uh, for us, uh, it's uh, very, very easy to use uh, modern technology to support uh, all the process because <laughs> we want uh, changing uh, our uh, company, our process, uh, but the human approach is completely different. Uh, we don't want to change. We want to uh, stay in this, uh, in this position. For this reason, I have to speak again, excuse me, about relationship, about relationship because ICT is a, in a crossroad. 
uh, in my company, we have uh, 54 different departments. We manage fiction, entertainment, news, but also uh, cartoons, uh, doc, documentary, corporate, and so on. So if you want to change, the key word is trust. Now we are architect, we are broker when we speak about cloud, but we need trust in our, in our company. For this reason, if you want to change the process, you have uh, uh, to uh, have a big relationship with HR, uh, with the, 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 the single, uh, the, 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 the different uh, uh, department and uh, with the external ecosystem. For me, it's very, very important to have a relationship with other company, not only in media environment, because I can understand how to change my internal process when I speak with a colleague, for example, uh, that we came from uh, industry or uh, uh, distribution, telco, and so on. If you know, if you can understand how to redesign the process, Today, we have a methodology. Today, we have a technology, the, the, a different possibility to implement these, these uh, uh, changing in our, uh, in our company. But for me, the key word is relationship and trust. Of course, in Italy, everything is relationships, no? Yes, yes, for this reason. <laughs> <laughs> and coffee and wine with those relationships, yes. definitely. And the food, excuse oh, me. And food, and food. So. sorry. Yes, of course. I'm sorry. Okay. How silly. <laughs> Hendrik, I just want to gonna yes. build one thing, if I may. Um, going back to something Rudy said, I think is really important that, you know, moving to products, because I think where I see the power is when you move to that portfolio approach. And that's been our biggest transformation is going to more of the use case so how are customers using this, this, these products together or these technologies together? And what is that portfolio approach? And it goes back to the fact that we're, you know, not looking at each product distinctly, but starting to look at what products become services that are deployed on other products as opposed to distinct products. And then what are those solutions and use cases aligned to how customers need to use that technology to solve problems? And to do that, what Massimo said is absolutely true. You've got to break down the silos, right? You don't have these separate teams anymore. You have these, you know, overlays or these team of teams, so to speak, the scrum of scrums. Um, and then you have to have a shared, you know, kind of uh, metrics and shared um, vision of, of what that use case is. What is it we're trying to solve? What is that business challenge? And so if everyone has that same information, it changes the way the business the technologists and the different parts of the organization work together to solve that problem together. It's very different than how we used to do uh, product management or development. So I, I think that's where it really gets exciting is when you align those things back to what customers are trying to do, because it just naturally starts to break down those silos. But I agree 100% with Massimo. If you don't have that trust at the foundation, you know, you can't put anything on top of it. Mm -hmm. do you want to add to that, I, uh, I believe? Yeah, I, I, maybe to emphasize a little bit on top, uh, and the moving from project budgets and project-based approach to indeed uh, features and, and within the Scrum of Scrums, it's a huge change, but the biggest advantage I've seen from that in the past, and probably a lot of you have the same experience, if you have a project budget, it will be finished. Eh? Never mm -hmm. I've seen a project giving money back. I've seen projects going over budget, but I've never seen going projects with budget <laughs> bad. So they always fulfill their needs with the budget they have. But if you have features, then suddenly you start to realize that a feature of another project maybe can be of more importance than this feature in this project. And then you are easily also to change and to switch priorities. So you have the backlog, you have priorities, and it's not, not anymore a project. So we try really to get away from that approach. And that helps a lot. And about the trust, Massimo, I completely agree. And uh, when you have people, people sitting together, operations, development, and business, and they start talking to each other, they start understanding each other. And trust all starts with understanding each other. My quote here is, I don't believe we have psychopaths in the company. Everybody says and does something because he sees it as a value from his point of view. 
even compliance. <laughs> so everybody has the right to put his thing on the table and everybody should understand why he put it on the table. So my, my challenge I put to my people is always ask three times why to a guy before you start discussing about it <laughs> because understanding is the start of building trust. Okay, we have. I want to call on uh, Luke Hendricks to come uh, back in because he has a, a, a almost like a personal question that he wants to uh, to, uh, to to present to the panel here. Well, the question is simple: Are we becoming agile or fragile? And we came from the age of the mainframe, and the mainframe everything was uh, structured and well organized. Then it became distributed computing, and it became a big spaghetti, and everything became a mess. And then we went into the age of the ERP and things went structured again and uh, became well organized and well controlled. And now we're in the age of agile and safe. So are we back on the other end of the pendulum? And will it become the big spaghetti again? Or uh, is there a logic to the madness? Great yeah. question. Who wants to tackle that? I can if I want, because I heard somebody uh, calling about a mainframe. <laughs> I think it doesn't have to do which kind of technology you're using if you're working project-based or if you're working scaled agile. So we do scaled agile projects perfectly on the mainframe as well. And also it doesn't have to do being completely chaos or completely structurized. I think what, what I find out was the biggest advantage of scaled agile is you decide for the next three months and you think about it very well, it's prioritized. And within those three months, you don't change anything and you let the people work without idle time, interdependent and so on. But you can change every three months again and you can reprioritize the next three months. So I think it's the right trade-off and mix between fixed and unstructured or chaos. And I think everybody is also calling for a fixed period of three months. This is decided, let me do my job and let me deliver what we need to be delivered. And I think it's, uh, it, it's working well. So I don't have that, that dilemma, to be honest. But that, that's on the working side. But what about uh, the architectural side of things, Margaret? Well, yeah, I put controlled chaos. I'm going to go back to what we talked about before, is that you know, there's got to be areas that you all agree on that become you know, standardized or those fabrics of your architecture. And I think that we've talked about it since then in different ways. It might be processes, policies, you know, everyone needs to care about security and, and, and data. And that's different, right? Because you now have the, you know, CMO that's sitting with an IT budget as big as the CIO. And I've always said that if that's the case, then you know, the CMO should also take, you know, responsibility for data security, which in the past has only been the CIOs. So I think you can absolutely, again, take technology out of it. Think of those areas. Where do you need to have more standards, more control, more policies apply to regulation? But you're going to have spaghetti. You're going to have some chaos. You're going to have some agility um, above that. And how you get control of that is through these teams of teams, is through this, this more agile, fail fast you know, focus on the features and the, and the customers and, and not these big, huge projects that are 12, 18 months long that fail 70% of the time. So I, I don't think it's either or. I think we're trying to make this too black and white. <coughs> it's going to be it's going to be chaotic, right? Open yeah. source is, is chaotic. Open is chaotic. But you've got to decide where do you need that control and that security and that policy and where do you let kind of the sparks fly because that's when innovation happens. If, if I allow, I, I agree, but not completely, Margaret. I think it's not, yeah. uh, you cannot tolerate chaos. At least in my environment, the banking and insurance environment, I cannot uh, tolerate chaos I, and I cannot tolerate insecure things. But wh what we try to manage uh, is that we have non functionals in our backlog as well. And there is in the, the, the team who decide about the priorities, the enterprise architects and the security specialists are part of it. And they yep. also manage that do those kind of non-functionals, if the security or architectural will have his priority. And also we measure it, eh? how many non-functionals have been delivered in that train for this PI. And if we see a train is never putting up non-functionals, I will step in. You can be damn sure because I will, I will be afraid and I will want to manage it. No, I love that. And I think you said something really important that everyone is looking at the same data and is, you know, accountable for that data or that, you know, that those deliverables. And, and I think this is where, Rudy, it goes back to leadership. Are leaders brokering that relationship and be, and also holding themselves accountable? And I think that's critical, right? We're on that same team, but you're going to have to, the first time you start doing this and it's hard, you're going to have to bring everyone to the table. Um, you've got to play that broker role, not necessarily the leader role. And that's a, that's a different way to lead. 
let's ask the specialist. I mean, uh, Massimo, you, you must know how do you manage spaghetti? That's the that's the question here. How do you how do you manage the the, the chaos of, of of being? How can you be too agile and too uh, uh, inventive? Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, today I, I, I see a baseline. We need story. We need a storytelling. Maybe the big company, the technology company uh, like uh, that uh, and other, give us the characters. We, the, when we, I speak uh, about characters, I speak about cloud, about age, about uh, uh, 5G and so on. This is the characters. With these characters, we need to build story because in our company we uh, need to making sense. The, 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 the scenario is very complex. Very, uh, it's not easy to understand the future. To understand uh, today what uh, uh, it's better to do. But we uh, in this period. Uh, we have the possibility to build big story and only with this story, only with the tool of the storytelling, we can change in our company the process, the culture, and uh, the other aspect that give us men and women in this uh, society. Thank you, Massimo. Angel, how do you look at this? How do you make sure that you're not creating chaos, that you can manage this. I mean, we're not in ERP times or in, in very structured mainframe times, but so, so how do you, how do you handle that? Yes, I mean, uh, uh, well, regarding the, the point, I mean, uh, regarding what we were discussing about product and, and process, I mean that uh, we have the tool that is the MVP, no? the Minimal Value Project uh, product. So then you, you create from, from doing something valuable for, for the business, and then over the over that you start to to produce uh, things that are valuable for for them no in order to the point is when you are needed for a business case or you are needed for something that you have to prioritize and something like this then is when then you enter into, into difficult question and regarding the different kind of tools and, and things that what you use okay i I am in a little bit sorry to say this Margaret but I mean regarding the the open source tools or something like this is creating a, a different confusion because you give the freedom to the all the developers and the people in order to use what they want to use, but someone has to maintain them in the production environment. And then uh, how the, if someone is working in Python, other one is working in R, other one is working in Java, because this is the way that they look to work. And then they promote these use cases to production and someone has to maintain them. So. And think that uh, I so, sorry, but I think that I truly believe in some kind of standards and way of, of working things. And also, for example, in, in our example in the blockchain, we used to do hyperlayer uh, uh, open source com uh, capabilities, and then we were very happy because the, the cost was free. But then it started how you to maintain, you have to pay a license fee in order that you want to get the support of IBM in order to get supported. Otherwise, you have to open the community and you get not a, a SLAs of eight hours in order to be responded, something like this. So sometimes I believe and I create a culture of open source, open minded, but at the end you are a company, you have to follow some rules and some kind of standards in, over in our in the production environments. Thank you.